Hey guys, Hink here. Today we're gonna to be talking about something that almost never gets talked about and honestly has pretty huge implications as far as um, enlargement and overall penile health. So we're gonna break that down and get into it today. So stay tuned. All right guys, so what am I talking about? Well, there's actually something that's called elastin. So elastin is one of the most abundant proteins in your body. It's this stretchy protein. It's almost like a rubber band, okay? Uh, it stretches out and can shrink back down. And it's in major tissues like your lungs, like your bladder, large blood vessels, some of your ligament. But it's different from collagen because like collagen is more for like structure, strength, support, whereas elastin is purely for stretchiness. It's about a thousand times more flexible than other organs. One of the important implications of this is that it makes up 5% of the actual tunica. And so this is what actually allows the, the penis to basically elongate and enlarge during an erection process. So this is what's responsible for that stretch. So for example, a quote from one of the papers I found is that the high degree of extensive sensibility and recoil properties of the corpus cavernosa are conferred by elastin fibers present in the, but not the sinusoids, so like the inside that like smooth muscle tissue as well as the actual tunica albuginea. So it's very important for erection health for overall penile health. One of the things that you may or may not know is that this is what's also largely responsible for whether or not you're a grower or a shower. If you are a grower, that means that you have higher amounts of elastin or at least it's theorized and so Therefore, you could get more of a stretch, and so you're more able to go from like a smaller flaccid to a larger erect state than somebody who has less elastin, and therefore, basically, what you see is what you get. They don't have as much stretchiness. So, Hink, why are you telling this? It's like, why do we care? You know, whatever. Well, it has important implications. Number one, it's an important part of the anatomy that never gets talked about, uh, or almost never gets talked about. And number two, when we're talking about different enlargement techniques and in general penile health, you know, we're talking about the tissue expanding and tissue enlarging, and this obviously has a vital role in that. Let's discuss its role in erectile function. So, like I said, you have the elastin that's present in the penile tissue, and not only like the sinusoids, but the smooth muscle, the actual blood vessels, and the actual tunica albuginea. There's also been studies where they've genetically engineered mice, which I'll put up a study here, where you can see that if you have altered elastin levels, you actually have erectile dysfunction because that elastin is not functioning appropriately. What else can happen when you have altered elastin levels? Peyronie's disease or Peyronie's disease. What you can see is that like in this paper here, you actually have increased anti-elastin antibodies. And so your elastin is dysregulated. And so when you have this disruption between your normal elastin, and especially when you have increased collagen formation, that's what actually leads to plaque developing, okay? So we wanna make sure that we have not only healthy elastin, but that we have basically abundant elastin as much as possible, okay? And so what are some ways that we can maximize our elastin health? Well, in the setting of Peyronie's disease, they've actually looked at a medication called pentoxifylline, okay? This is, you're not gonna be able to get it without a prescription. It is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor, similar to something like Viagra or Cialis, and so, as you guys know, I'm a big proponent of basically chronic low dose amounts of either some sort of phosphodiesterase, PDE5 inhibitor, specifically like Cialis or Viagra, and part of it for is for this reason because it can help to maintain your actual elastin levels. There's a lot of evidence for things that are really being extrapolated from, uh, from the skin because you have elastin in your skin, it's what's responsible for skin health preventing wrinkles. And so that's where most of the data, the scientific papers are. You can have something like red ginseng, which you can see here, vitamin A, micro needling. And there's even evidence, once again, something that I always talk about, um, either citrulline or arginine. Here's a rat study looking at skin Skin in rats, I know, but it's saying that there is a positive effect on skin elasticity when you supplement with L-arginine, like seen in this paper. And there's also evidence that you can actually improve vascular pathways when you use things like citrulline and ar arginine, um, which can, uh, you know, indirectly improve the quality of your elastin, like in this paper here. There's also evidence of actual the PRP, the platelet-rich plasma, that can actually increase your levels of elastin and collagen within skin injections specifically. Once again, skin injections. However, it is interesting because uh, there is that P-Long study by Dr. Brandeis, if I'm saying his name correctly, 
which I'll put up a little excerpt here, but it actually looked at PRP injections and they saw that there was basically dramatic improvement on their protocol and increases in size when they actually examined that. More importantly, in my opinion, is what are some things that actually decrease elastin? What's like the number one thing that I am so adamantly against, guys? You guessed it, smoking, nicotine. And so um, here's a paper showing that smoking leads to basically a degradation of elastin fibers, which is not good for your penile health, amongst other things. If you haven't seen my entire video on why you should stop smoking or the top 10 things you need to avoid, you really need to check out those videos. Also, I mentioned PRP earlier. If you're interested in that, I also have a paper all about PR, or a paper, a video all about PRP, which you can check out if you wanna learn more about that. Another interesting fact, which once again, I've talked about all the time, is poor diet, okay? So here's a rabbit study that showed that higher cholesterol levels decrease your elastin levels. And so there's an adverse effect on elastin when you have bad cholesterol. Now that is through a variety of different pathways and arteriogenesis, et cetera, but it doesn't matter, guys. You need to not smoke, you need to have a healthy diet, and you need to exercise, like you just do. And so a very interesting topic that we're gonna discuss soon, it's gonna require its own video, is actually lysyl oxidase, okay? So lysyl oxidase is basically what's responsible for taking your different collagen fibers and actually like putting them in the organization that you need. And that goes partially for elastin as well. There's different papers showing that actually lysyl oxidase can actually increase your elastin level. Interesting thing about elastin, in my research at least, is that you want to have a healthy balance of elastin. So if you have uh, too much elastin or too little elastin, it can lead to problems. So this is a paper showing that you can increase elastin with lysyl oxidase, but as we'll touch on, there's a lot of rat data that shows enlargement in the penile activity in rats when you actually give them an anti, basically, lysyl oxidase, like an inhibitor. And so we're gonna break that down in its own paper, but it is something that I wanted to kind of foreshadow, okay? Because it definitely is gonna require its own video to break this stuff down. The most interesting thing that I have come across is actually this study, which I'll put up here, and it was basically looking at sildenafil, also known as Viagra, and its role in the aortic aneurysms in um, genetically engineered mice. Now, this is really important, guys. So pay attention to nothing else. Pay attention to this part of the video, okay? So basically, what they showed is that if you have these genetically engineered mice that are more prone for aortic aneurysms and they are given sildenafil, it actually increases the rate of aortic aneurysm. On the surface, you might be like, ooh, that's not good. That sounds horrible. Well, yeah, yes. If you are at risk of having an aortic aneurysm or you're an older guy and you have aortic aneurysm, aneurysm, then you probably don't want to be taking Viagra. However, for our purposes, I think that this is important. First of all, we need to break down some, some important anatomy, okay? So you have your tunica albuginea, which is basically the, the sheath-like lining around the corpus cavernosum and the uh, corpus spongiosum of the penis, okay? That's like your, your fibrous sheath that really limits your growth, okay? And so you also have tunica, three different layers that are present in your aorta, okay? Most importantly, the tunica externa of the aorta is uh, very similar to the tunica albuginea as far as it's like fibrous properties, okay? Why don't you explain this to me like I am an eight year old? So takeaway, the tunica of the penis is similar to the tunica of the aorta, okay? An aortic aneurysm is when your aorta dilates, okay? It's not good in your aorta. But if you remember from my megalophallus video, what they see in these guys that have megalophallus, which is literally a medical condition where the penis and the corpora actually dilates, okay? And you have these guys with girths that are literally up to like 10 inches in girth that they have to have surgery because they can't even have sex with it, is from a, a what they call an aneurysmal dilation of the tunica as discussed in this paper here. Part of the reason that they attribute this happening is to actually a loss of elasticity of the tunica. Stay with me, okay? What this paper that I was talking about regarding higher rates of aortic aneurysms and Viagra is showing is that you are chronically limiting the smooth muscle contractile contraction of the actual vessels. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? So what does that mean? In order to have healthy aortas, you're, you need to basically expand and contract, expand and contract. When you give Viagra, it leaves it in a more expanded state, 
which makes you more prone to aortic aneurysms. Now, this is an extrapolation. Most importantly, I recommend things like Viagra, Sildenafil, Tadalafil, because of the benefits as far as like the endothelial function, the prevention of things like fibrosis, the prevention of things like erectile dysfunction, okay? Even with chronic use, once you come off, you still have better erectile function if you were on Viagra previously. Now, extrapolating from this data, it makes sense that you would use something like a Viagra or Cialis because we are actively trying to stretch the tissues in our, you know, in our phalluses. If we are keeping the contractile tissue in a more dilated state, that is going to predispose us to more enlargement because you don't have that contraction of that tissue again. There's more dilation, which over time in chronic low doses can lead to potential enlargement. Potential enlargement, and I agree, you know, this argument is a stretch. <laughs> But I mean, honestly, it makes sense. If anybody has seen, you know, my results, I've honestly had, you know, pretty impressive gains if I do say so myself. And it, it does make sense. I mean, this is literally proof of concept because I've always said that enlargement is very similar to like the process of an aortic aneurysm. Um, it's just something to think about. So you guys should read this paper yourself. Just, it, it's just very, very interesting stuff. More so like conceptually and theoretically, okay? Guys, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you taking a second to like this video and subscribe. My subscriber count has gone through the roof and I really appreciate you guys uh, supporting this channel, okay? What are my closing conclusions with Elastin? Number one, nobody really talks about it. It's funny, I found this getting bigger post and it was like, why doesn't anybody look into Elastin? And it's a good question. This is not hot take hink or like, you know, shade throwing hink coming out, but it's, it's interesting that there's like, people kind of break down the penile anatomy and I get it, you wanna do it simplistically for, for like most followers, but like, for example, like fascia release techniques, okay? They're talking about fascia release for the tunica, but it's like, well, why are you talking about fascia release for the tunica when there's actually something that's called Buck's fascia, which is actually on the penis overlying the tunica? And why does that never get mentioned? I think it's important that we know all the different aspects of like the penile tissue and the anatomy and including things like elastin so we can build on this moving forward, okay? Once again, it also brings up some very interesting points. I mean, not only about growers versus showers, which I've talked about uh, before, but also, you know, it does add even more credence to what I was saying about potentially adding a low dose PDE5 inhibitor, which if you haven't seen my videos, breaking down all of the benefits of that, part one and part two, you need to check that out. If you wanna maximize your endothelial function, so the blood vessel function in your um, penile chambers and maximize your erection quality, please check out Vigor. We also have our testosterone booster vitality on the body leviathansubs.com and on Amazon. Guys, if you need any sort of products, you can go to Peak Male Physique. If you need to reach me personally, patreon.hink. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something today. I appreciate any kind of comments for the algorithm, guys. And until the next one, peace and love, and I'll talk to you.